Hi, this is Miss Slitton, and this is my wonderful Period One AP Bio class. Say hi. hi. Okay, so oh, you can't see what I'm seeing. So we're going to discuss the Blast Lab. This is Investigation Three, and um, in the links, I have links to the actual text, uh, the lab book digitally. Um, I'm letting you know that you can work with up to two other people, a total of three people, and it will be a digital document. So if you pull open that lab map. When you make a copy of it, I think I have it set up so you all get a copy of it. Is that what I did? Um, so you're going to want to put the name, and remember if you're working with somebody from a different group, put a uh, different class, put the period um, there after their names if it's different. If you're all in the same period, just put it once, right? And I, I set this up, <clears throat> we've already been discussing cladograms as it is, but the, the lab has a really, if you, when you read through it, and I highly encourage you to read through it before your final. Um, it, it really explains the idea of a cladogram a little bit more. Um, this part at the beginning, this comes in towards the end of the lab. And this is, um, in order to, to do this lab, you are going to use a resource online, and everything here is real. And there's a Blast Lab Home which will process and compare um, nucleotide sequences, um, amino acid sequences, and this is a real, I mean, it's a working site, and you're jumping into it, and you're going to be using four different genes um, from a, this is a fossil that was located, and they were able to isolate DNA, and you're getting four sequences of genes, and you're going to load that gene information into the BLAST lab, and based on how similar the um, sequences are, you're going to place it in a cladogram where you think this fossil should go, okay? So everything here is real, nothing is pretend. Um, you're gonna go, this link right here will take you to the College Board website, and when you scroll to the bottom, I wanted you to see, when you get to the very, very bottom, you'll see a picture that looks similar to this, and it has four different genes listed there. In the original lab book, your textbook, your digital copy of the lab book, they only had three genes, but now there are four, okay? And some of the images do not exactly match um, the printing of the lab book, so I let you know what to look for through that, so that's in this explanation, and I wanna walk you through that process. Um, I just want you to see what else you need to do first. So we will use this um, in just a little bit. So your driving question is how can bioinformatics be used as a tool to determine evolutionary relationships and better understand um, genetic diseases? And from the background, the digital lab book of which you have a link, I put it in here only a million times, um, student manual, follow directions in your lab book, all of, these, all of these links will take you to the lab book. From the background that you read, um, I would like you to um, write in complete sentences and you have two paragraphs that you are going to write and the first paragraph I, I've given you what I want you to address. I, I want this, these prompts gone when you actually turn it in, so it's just two paragraphs, okay? So um, give two reasons why the information gathered from the Human Genome Project is important. What does BLAST stand for? What can you do with it? What is a cladogram? What is another name for it? Differentiate between what is used historically and now to create a, cl a cladogram. That'll be your paragraph one. Paragraph two, describe the new fossil specimen found in China. Um, China. See procedures in your lab book. Identify morphological characteristics of the fossil. Okay, and that is what you're going to be using. That's the genes that you're gonna be using. On your hypothesis, you're writing this hypothesis, your if-then-because statement. I have provided the variables for you. Um, your independent variable are the four different genes. Your dependent variable will be the percent similarities. How similar is the, uh, you know, you'll be comparing sometimes ribosomal RNA, nuclear DNA, um, so you'll be comparing different ones, okay? Um, and then your constants are looking at the same four genes in all different organisms. So your flow chart, because this is a digital lab, this is not something I want images, like here's me looking like I'm at a computer. You know, it just, this is not, you know, this is not a good um, lab to do diagrams. And also, there's so many little different steps. I'm just looking for a generalization here of what you're doing in this lab. You know, very, very simple. You know, you're taking these genes, and these genes are, the sequence is so 
huge. It's not something, and you don't have the capability to open up the information, so you have to download it onto your um, desktop of your computer and then upload it into the BLAST website so it can interpret the data. You can't open up the gene information. There's nothing you have that will you that can interpret it or have the ability to open it. You have to upload it into the BLAST website, these four genes, and then, that, then it can be for, interpreted from there. Um, your data table setup, I have set up what your data table should be, okay? So I, I have already made your data table for you. You just have to punch in what needs to go into that data table because that I'm directing what I want, what I want you to do here. <coughs> so flow chart is just a couple of sentences. Data table, um, see below. And in essence, what you're going to do is when you load up the four genes, and we're gonna do one of them together so you can see how it works. When you load up the four genes, you're gonna look for matches, and it's gonna match the top 20 organisms um, that they have that matches that particular gene sequence. And I'm asking you to give me the top two. Now, sometimes the top two are the exact same organism because it'll be a clone of that organism. Do you see? So I want you to ignore all clones or repeats. You know, go to the next organism. And I will show you how to find its scientific name, and um, I will show you how to find its common name. And, um, and so for gene one, you'll put its scientific name, common name, percent query. That means how similar is it to the gene I'm giving you, this particular organism? Is it 99% similar? Is it 100% similar? Is it 87% similar? And so what you'll end up having is a, a, then a spreadsheet of some different organisms and you'll be able to predict where it goes on the cladogram. Now, it initially asks you to place it on the cladogram and to draw a cladogram and say where do you think it should go based on the morphological characteristics. And then you, then you put the DNA in there and then you go, okay, now based on the DNA, would you put it in the same spot? And so you draw one of your, uh, for your analysis, um, for this part, you're gonna say what species in BLAST result has the most similar gene um, sequence to the gene of interest. For this part, um, I'm gonna let you go ahead and just put your answers in here. I want you to put them in blue for me though. Okay, so they stand out. You can just respond to each of these. And in number six, draw a cladogram with your team, take a picture of it, and, and, and upload that picture of how you would draw your cladogram now based on the information that you have. Um, there for number six, put it right there. And then you'll type in your conclusions right there. Yes, sir. So I think I pretty much understand. We, we find the DNA and then we go to the BLAST website and then we put it in and then we get the two organisms that are most closely related. And then, and then we make our own cladogram based off those organisms. You use the information that you get from similarities in DNA for four different genes. So you're taking from the unknown organism, you have four pieces of information. You're plugging it into the BLAST website and they're gonna crank out one of the similarities. And then using that information, you will place then your organism in a, on a cladogram where you think it evolved from. So before, like for our demo here in class, we use nails, right? So, and some of you used the tops of the nails were important. For some of you, the bottoms of the nails were important. And right now, you're working on finishing your cladogram for the nails, right? You're gonna take a image for that. So now, when you first look at this and when you read this lab, the only thing you have to go off of is the morphological similarities between this unknown organism and other organisms that you're familiar with, right? That's all you have to go off of it. Now, let's reevaluate it if we're looking at the actual you know, nucleic acids in this organism. Does that change where we put it on the cladogram? Follow? Okay, so now I wanna walk you through the process. So what you might wanna do is kinda of still keep your instructions up here, okay? But you're in, this is what we're going, what we're doing, what we're going through. So the first thing I need to do is I, and again, Please wait to go to the website and do all of this till you've done all the other aspects of the lab. Okay, do your background first, you know, do your flow chart or whatever. Do all of that first. This is the last thing you do because otherwise it kind of alters it. I just want to show you because it can be kind of confusing. 
So when you go to the College Board, you're going to scroll that link that I put in there. And for those of you who are listening, I am putting the lab map that I have here, I am putting a um, copy of it. It'll force you to make a copy of it. I'll put a link underneath this YouTube video at the bottom so you can have access to all the same links that I have here and you can use it. Okay, so if you scroll down to the bottom, 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 okay, you can see it has gene one, gene two, gene three, and gene four. And it tells you exactly what to do here, those instructions that I gave you. But what you want to do is it's downloading it right here. And you can download all of them at the same time. But this is something you're going to be downloading onto a desktop. And again, I would encourage you to do this on your own computer or in here when you plan, you know, once you've done the other aspects of it. Okay? So it, it's downloading them as a zip file, a zip file that we don't have anything really to unzip it with. Okay? But then what I want you to do next is if you go into the, and I explain this, if you go here or any way that you want to to go into your downloads, okay, if you go into your downloads folder, what you want to do, did I go into my downloads? I did not. If I go into my downloads, see, I've already undone, I've done these before, so they might already appear on my computer differently, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take um, your downloads. Donde esta? Okay, here we go. So you're going to take these genes right here, and you're going to just drag them out here onto your desk like this. Did you see how I did that? Here's gene three. Okay, so I would download each of these genes and put them right here on my desktop. Now, they still look all zippy, right? So there's nothing I can do with them at that point. Uh, uh, uh. There's nothing I can do at this point with them. So what I would recommend that you do next is you take these and all you have to do when they're on your desktop, okay, is you just kind of double click on them and it'll make this little execute box. Did you see how I did that? Execute. Execute. Okay. Now, now that they're in that execute way, Okay, so all I did is download them, drag them onto my desktop, okay? Now when they're like this, now it's something I can load into the BLAST website, of which on your lab map, I have a link to the BLAST website. It'll look like this, okay? Now, there's all kinds of things, um, and there you can see what BLAST stands for, right? Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, okay? So it finds regions of similarity between biological sequences. Um, it compares nucleotide or protein sequences to sequence databases and calculates the statistical significance. So on my instructions, those of you who saw the lab map open, what did I say to do next? Go to save strategies. So does anybody see save strategies on here? Look for it. You see it? Top, top right? Okay, and I'm walking you through this so you don't like go, ah, I did this. Okay, so I go to save strategies. Okay, now what is it, what did I tell you to do next after you go to save strategies? What? Browse. Okay, so what do you think I need to do? What on here would I need to click if I was going to do this? Choose a file maybe? Okay, so I'm going to choose a file to upload and I'm going to get it from my desktop. So I'm looking at my desktop, I'm putting it right here, and I'm using the execute one right here for gene one. Okay? So I'm gonna double click on that, and you can see it's put it right here. And the next thing I need to do is view. Okay? So it's, it's now gonna bring it up into its BLAST system. Okay? I haven't done anything yet other than I have, you can see right here, okay? It's brought it up in here. The next thing I need, I don't need to change anything on here, okay? I'm standard blasting, okay? What does it say the next thing I need to do? There's something I need to do. Click blast. So look, I don't see it right away. What could I do if I was looking for it? Now do you see it? You see I roll down? Okay, so now I'm gonna hit blast. Now this part, depending on how fast things work, this is how it'll come up initially. It might take a second or two, or you know, 20 or 30 seconds in order for it to actually run. 
because <coughs> it is taking that huge long chain of amino or, or DNA bases and comparing it in its database. And it's trying to find the top 20 matches. And there it's done it. OK? Oh, here it did 122 blast hits on 100 subject sequences. <coughs> so here we can see there are a lot of similarities. If I put my um, mouse over here, okay, it says this is Gallus Gallus collagen. Okay. Oh, look, here's some more Gallus Gallus. Wonder what Gallus Gallus is. Here's some other names. Okay. Not super helpful, right? So now I go down here. Okay, and again, here's some information. It's showing you right here. Do you see the, this would be the query right here. How similar the DNA is. Do you see these numbers here? Query cover. So this is saying this is 100% similar to what I just put out there. And, th and, and this is 100% similar to what I just put out here, though it's the same one. And then I drop down here and it's 98% similar. So I take this one right up here, this top one, and you know what I need to do next. What did I say in the instructions? It's in, actually, if you go to the data table part, is where I explained it in the lab map. You see what it says to do in the lab map? Ascension. Good. So I go over here to where it says Ascension, okay, and I click on it. So anybody find out what a gallus gallus is? Chicken. It's a chicken. <laughs> yeah, it's a chicken. So this fossil, this particular segment of DNA, it matches a chicken. So that indicates to me maybe it's a bird, <laughs> okay? Maybe not. So you're going to have to decide. So right here, I've asked you for, to put in your data table, I asked you for its... Um, Scientific name, so what I would do, this one's an easy one, but some of them are, are hard. So I would just do this, I would do a copy, okay? And then I would paste that in my lab map, okay? I would go to my lab map and I would go in here and I would put scientific name, gene one, paste. Oh, okay, that didn't work. It worked at home. What did, you, what did I highlight it? Uh, you might have highlighted the link. Oh, I didn't hit copy, did I? Okay, so anyway, you would type in the scientific name there, which I did a really good job of, but I forgot to hit copy. Okay, so I would write the scientific name, and then I would write the common name, which was what? Chicken. Chicken. And then what was the percent covering? Or coverage, what? So I put 100%. Okay, and you can see I, um, on here, um, I want you to ignore repeats. Okay, if the next one comes up is exactly Gallus Gallus Chicken, it's probably some clone of it. So always ignore the exact same one. Just go down to your next one. So you're gonna plug in all four genes and you're gonna look to see what, what, you know, what were the top ones. So for this one, we just did the first one, so now we would have to do the secondary match to that. We'd go down to whatever isn't Gallus Gallus, click on the Ascension, and then post this in here. And then you'll look to see how it matches and then predict where it would go on the cladogram. Okay, questions or concerns? Okay, you're super smart.